What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon VGC video. Today I am going to be talking about, well I'll be honest, spoilers. This is, this is going to be a spoiler video, right? So um, there have been some leaks going around uh, from a source that seems to be pretty credible as they've also leaked images of the game that are just incredibly convincing and hard to fake. Uh, so from this source, we actually got a leak about what the Gen 9 gimmick is. So what I will say is, while we aren't 100% sure about this being the Gen 9 gimmick, if you guys don't want to be spoiled, just go ahead, click off now. I don't want to have to deal with complaints about spoilers, you know. Uh, so yeah. Also, there is a rumor that there is going to be a trailer tomorrow. So in case I'm at work and this trailer reveals the gimmick and explains it in much greater detail, I have a backup thumbnail that I'm going to switch uh, for this video where instead of saying we probably know the Gen 9 gimmick, I'm going to say let's talk about the Gen 9 gimmick. Just, just so you know, this is made before that trailer drops in case it does. But yeah, let's get into it. If you guys enjoy this damn play in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content and answer my comment question of the day. What do you think about this supposed Gen 9 gimmick? Anyways, let's get into it. So, um, I'm going to say it right now. The Generation 9 gimmick, as according to this this source right here, this this leaker that also gave us like a bunch of... By the way, we're not going to be talking about like the, the other leaks that this person's posted um, as far as like images. We're just talking about the gimmick today. Um, the gimmick is supposedly a... Basically, how do I explain it? it? It powers up one particular type of move supposedly equivalent to a stab boost. So it's a 50% boost. It's nothing like super absurd um, until the Pokemon switches out, which I'm fine with. Honestly, I think that while this is going to be like a rich get richer scenario, sort of like Dynamax, it won't nearly be as bad because this, this basically is a super temporary power up. This is a power up that could be used to perpetuate like a hyper offensive metagame. However, at the same time, while it is like a straight up offensive gimmick, there's like no way to use this defensively, one would assume. It's not like the Pokemon gains any benefits beyond it, and it's not like an instant one shot KO. There are like, there, there is counterplay to this. The Pokemon that still get beaten by certain Pokemon still get beaten by those Pokemon. It's not like you can just Dynamax and eat the hit. It's not like you can Mega Teat the hit. And it's not like you have like one super powerful move, like a Z move that could like exceed, you know, 190, 180 base power at times. Uh, I think Shattered Psyche was like 200 base power. Like they, they were ridiculously powerful moves. This is basically just like slapping a choice specs or a choice band onto one particular type, which I'm perfectly fine with. I want to talk about how this compares to other gimmicks and how people might use it. So, Megas. Let's start off with, with the elephant in the room. Um, megas are something that people want back in the game. I'm not going to talk about whether or not they will be or whether or not I think they are because it's it's unconfirmed, but we're pretty sure they're not. Um, Kangaskhan, Mega Gengar, Mega Salamence, Mega Metagross, Mega Tyranitar, and I threw in Mega Manectric because I like Mega Manectric. Um, these first four or five are some of the most highly used Megas ever, and they were broken in the generation that they came out. At least Kangaskhan was. Gengar, kind of, you know, it was, there's a case to be made for it, but it was, it was pretty fair. Um, while Kangaskhan doesn't fit into the rich get richer thing that uh, Megas caused, uh, it was very broken, so we're going to throw it into this. So Megas were interesting in that it was a generational gimmick that only applied to a very select amount of Pokemon. Supposedly this new gimmick will apply to every Pokemon across the board, and who knows, maybe there's like a secondary gimmick that they might throw in for, you know, specific forms if you want to power up like one particular type of move. We don't know. But I think the one thing about Megas that people truly, truly didn't like was the fact that certain Pokemon that were already good just got better and it made it feel like the Pokemon that didn't get access to Megas that were like not good. For example, let's go with in this generation, Butterfree. Beedrill got a Mega. Beedrill's Mega was okay. Um, Butterfree didn't get a Mega and people thought it was like completely just like it, it was an opportunity that was squandered. Same with Flygon. Meanwhile, Salamence got a Mega. It already had really solid stats and it just had those stats like thrown up into the stratosphere. Uh, you know, Metagross also got a Mega. Its stats were already amazing and it got like super, super buffed. Tyranitar too. Manectric definitely deserved the usage it got. It was very, it was a very cool Mega. But yeah, these Pokemon basically became much more broken than they would have been if they had just stayed in their base form. They were pretty balanced in their base form for the most part. Um, 
but also in like Gen 6 as opposed to Gen 7 versions of Megas, the like they weren't. Game Freak wasn't so concerned with comp competitively balancing their game, and in my opinion, they're getting more and more concerned with that as the generations go on, and it's evident by the way they design Pokemon uh, nowadays. So they tuned down Megas in Gen 7, like Kangaskhan, I believe. You know, parental bond went from 1.5 times power to 1.25, which is actually pretty good. Um, or not, instead of like a 50% boost by hitting a second time, it was like it was a 25% boost by hitting a second time, if that made sense. Uh, so yeah, Gengar lost access to Levitate. So while its Mega remained largely the same, it wasn't able to switch in on Earthquakes anymore, which is really big. Aerial Eight, all the eight, all the eight abilities got uh, nerfed a bit. Like their multiplier went down. You know, Metagross pretty much stayed the same. It lost power up punch. I, I don't know if it ever got power up punch, to be honest. Did it? It did. But, like, you know, it, it didn't really run it. So, yeah. So, in Gen 7, they, they tuned down Megas, and I think that was to make room for other hyper offense. <laughs> so, in, in Gen 7, we got Z moves. Now, Z moves were a concept that was pretty interesting. However, it did result in some annoying stuff that could happen. Uh, so basically, you got a we got one super powerful move, and it wasn't that bad to be honest. It wasn't like Dynamax, where it's just three Z moves in a row plus an HP buff plus stat. I don't know I, what made them think that was a good idea. I'm just gonna say that right now. What made them think that was a good idea? Uh, so the only bad thing about you know Z moves is that you didn't know where it was. So you could be facing a Heatran with a Grassium Z, and it could run Solar Beam, and now Heatran beats Swampert, which it never should. Wow, wasn't that cool when they only had one opportunity to one-shot your Swampert? Uh, now they have three. So yeah, that was a thing. Um, something I forgot to throw on was, you know, in Gen 8, we got Gigantamax Pokemon, and as well as Dynamax as a whole, which we'll talk about that to a lesser extent, uh, if I can actually remember how to look at these. So... G-Max also perpetuated Hyper Offense, but in a much more blatant way. Um, you know, Dynamax allowed you to get stat boosts off of pretty much every move except for the ones that nerfed your opponent. Um, it boosted the power of every single move depending on what base power it started at. Uh, you had double your HP and you had three turns to do it. It was it, it basically just made Hyper Offense the, the standard for competitive Pokemon. So I would say Z-Moves opened the door for Dynamax. And then Dynamax, like, tore down the door, burned it, and replaced it with, like, I don't know, a slingshot to just throw you through the door. This new gimmick, limiting it to one type of move in the... It's almost like... It's it's almost like a tuned-down version of Z-Moves. It's, like, basically adding a third type. However, we haven't been confirmed. If, if It hasn't been confirmed if, if you couldn't just apply it to a type that already existed, therefore giving you like a choice specs or choice band boost or whatever choice item you would want without having to be locked into it. So, yeah, I think that this, compared to everything we've had so far, this doesn't seem so bad. There's no stat boost. There's just a multiplier on a certain type of move. Um, and it's called like a crystallization or whatever. I don't know. What I want to talk about today is by the way Golduck's here because Golduck was actually a notorious Z-Move user in 2017 which is a very strange thing that people didn't know. Uh, what I want to talk about are the Pokemon that would benefit most from this. Pokemon I'm scared about getting benefits from this because there's always going to be a few bad apples there um, and Pokemon that if we can use like the same type if, if we can like add a crystallization of a type that already is on the Pokemon then I want to talk about that you know because you don't get the you don't get the downsides you don't get you don't gain any weaknesses you just gain like stab from what i can understand so let's let's get started so landorus incarnate i think i'm actually more scared of that than landorus therian because landorus incarnate now has access to sheer force which if you don't know allows you to bypass life orb recoil and it stacks with you know sheer force sheer force stacks with life orb so it's 1.3 times 1.3 you don't have any life orb recoil and you know it, it usually runs earth power um, and Sludge Bomb and like all these other moves, but now the fact that like it doesn't just have Stab on Earth Power, now the fact that it can have Stab on a Sheer Force boosted Sludge Bomb is a little bit scary because it's going to be one-shotting fairies more easily than it did before. Extra Sensory, that's saying that it, it you know, it, it has, but it doesn't really run, but now it could run that to just annihilate something like a, like a Poison type that is levitating, I suppose. Um, Focus Blast isn't going to be important, but it's just it's just the point of like it now has access to higher power um, life or boosted sheer force moves. 
But what I'm really scared of above all else, if we can boost like a type that already exists on this Pokemon, is how strong this Earth Power is going to be. Because if it is a stab boost, here's the total amount of multipliers. It is 1.3 times 1.3 times 1 1.5 because of your stab times 1.5 again because of the crystallization or whatever. That's a lot of multipliers. I, I, we are well past the point of it hitting something that resisted and still KOing. We are well past that point. So it basically becomes like a Z-move spammer. Um, Landorus could be scary if it's in the game. Metagross, I'm not as concerned about. However, um, we don't know if it's item-based, by the way. I hope it's item-based, though. Uh, if you're choice banded and you don't have to use an item to use this, you know, ability or this, this gimmick, all of a sudden now, your Iron Heads, your Meteor Matches will be hurting a lot more. Uh, but also, Metagross just generally gaining access to a stab boost on ground type moves is very big for it as it will now be able to take on other metagross very easily uh gaining a stab boost on stuff like ice punch will allow it to deal with like landers therian much more easily uh as probably one shot it now like now like the bulkiest of landers won't be able to eat that uh stab on rocks i would also be very annoying porygon z is probably one of the scariest ones because it already has adaptability so if it can like have a normal type boost on top of its adaptability on top of its like you know normal stab that'd be very scary but gaining a stab boost we don't know if it's going to stack with adaptability i doubt it will because it isn't technically a type change it's just like a type benefit um but if it does all of these moves all of a sudden become one-shotting machines which is super interesting i think that porygon z will definitely be something that people will want to try out if it does stack with adaptability but like i said I'm, I'm doubtful that it would but even if it doesn't just porygon z basically getting a 1.5 on anything other than normal type moves helps it out immensely like you're usually just spamming try attack if we're being real or hyper beam if you're you know crazy um try attack was already like coming close to one shotting a lot of like bulkier pokemon uh with a life or boost or whatever item you want to run to increase that so now having you know you already have base 135 special attack and you already have this move that can one shot a lot of pokemon but your main issue is that you can't hit ghost types Having, you know, stab on Shadow Ball or stab on Dark Pulse with a Life Orb all of a sudden makes it so there aren't as many Porygon Z switch-ins. You basically have to play Porygon Z like I don't, like if it, if it doesn't need an item to do this, you have to play against Porygon Z assuming that it's always going to have a super effective move for you, which is really scary. So yeah. Ferrothorn is one of the few Pokemon that I think benefit a lot more from this than people are probably think. Um, and that's not because like it offensively wants to do much, but you know. Iron Defense Body Press Ferrothorn has been a thing in this recent metagame, and it usually doesn't even run grass moves anymore um, because it just straight up doesn't need to. But if you don't need an item for this and you can still run leftovers, you can give yourself like a bigger boost on your body press. And that, that would just actually be super scary because Ferrothorn's body press coming off a 131 base attack with like a relaxed nature and max uh investment along with like a single iron defense already hits like a truck there are very few pokemon that can take two of these there are very few pokemon that can take like one plus four body press if ferrothorn all of a sudden gains stab on that and it goes from an 80 base power move to a 120 base power move that's re that's really scary i would hope that it requires an item to do it but if it doesn't you know leftovers ferrothorn all of a sudden has a very solid option into a lot of pokemon garchomp is something that i just threw in here because i thought it would be uh interesting to note that it does have very decent coverage Garchomp doesn't like facing off versus fairies, and typically its best option is like Life Orb Poison Jab. However, while Life Orb Poison Jab comes close to one-shotting a lot of fairy types, it doesn't quite do the job. It requires like a Swords Dance boost or something. Like, I think it does it get Dragon Dance this gen? It doesn't. That was Flygon. If you can now just entirely bypass that by giving yourself stab on Poison Jab, that's gonna be really scary. Another reason that I'd prefer this to require an item. Like, Let's say it's like a Poison EMZ, right? Let's just use it as like a stand-in. Now you have to dedicate that tech specifically for beating fairies to an item, which, you know, now it's not like as devastating of a move. You're not getting Life Orb and Stab on it. So yeah, Registeel, same deal as Ferrothorn. I just thought I'd point that out because it is a very scary Pokemon. Uh, now these are like the Pokemon that I'm really scared uh, regardless of if it requires an item because these are just generally scary Pokemon. Uh, Araquanid, if it does require an item, you might as well just put like a choice band on it. But if it doesn't require an item, um, that's scary because it already has water bubble for the uh, two times multiplier on like liquidations. 
but if you get you know stab times 1.5 so 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25 times 2 that is a five that is not not five times that is a 4.5 times multiplier on water moves it's already a scary pokemon and if it doesn't require an item you might as well throw a mystic water on there there you go 1.2 times 4.5 whatever that is i don't want to know but yeah that's that's a lot of damage output darmanitan gorilla taxi gorilla tactics could be very scary uh, while you would mostly just want to like boost your ice punches, um, not ice fang, ice punch, or your ice go crashes. Now it also will gain access to like stab flare blitz if you really want it. Uh, stab, it doesn't get close combat, but it does get like superpower. I'm pretty sure stab, stab superpower, stab earthquake. It has a lot of like really decent coverage moves. Um, and if it gains basically a gorilla tactics boost on that, that would be very super like a wall breaky. So yeah, I know I'm like being very, how do I say it, negative about this i'm not i'm trying not to be negative i'm just pointing out every single possibility of like a pokemon that might be able to really really abuse this mechanic if they're allowed to do it uh so yeah tapu coco is another scary one all the tapus except for you know bulu because we want to run rillaboom could abuse that pretty easily and yeah if you get my point i i've basically just been going through like a giant list of pokemon that might be able to take advantage of like a third typing or just a turning their 1.5 multiplier on stab moves into 2.25s. It's basically like adaptability for every Pokemon at that point. I wanted to point that out. Um, but I'll be honest, I don't think it's nearly as bad as every other mechanic we've had so far, because single Pokemon aren't benefiting much more than every other Pokemon. Well, some might, you know, Tapu Koko specifically. Uh, we aren't having one move just all of a sudden come out of nowhere and you have to guess where the move is and all of a sudden you lose a Pokemon like in the case of like Swampert versus uh, Heatran but we're also not having like the issue of Dynamax where Pokemon can just double their HP and plow through an entire team if you make a single mistake I think if we could ask for any I, personally I would prefer if there were just no gimmick let's be real I'd prefer if there was no gimmick in the game but if we do get stuck with this one if the trailer did come out and I had to make this beforehand I, this isn't that bad, you know, it's limited to one Pokemon, hopefully it's restricted to an item, uh, and it doesn't provide any benefit beyond the fact that you just have, like, a choice boost on a particular type of move, you just get stab, that isn't that bad, that's about as, like, competitively balanced as any gimmick we've had, like, it, or it's, it's about as competitively balanced as any gimmick we could ask to have, because I think it's more balanced than Megas, probably, um, because you're not, you know, you're not dedicating one like Pokemon to being basically necessary on your team. Because how do I say it? Mega is also restricted team building a little bit. Every team needed a Mega. So like there was a, a list of Pokemon that had a higher chance of being picked than anything else. Um, which, which I guess exists in every metagame, but it, it isn't like tied to a gimmick in most metagames. Uh, Z moves, while every Pokemon could use them, it was too strong and it could easily just be used as like a one-time nuke button, which was kind of bad. Uh, Dynamax was annoying because there were certain Pokemon that could have G-Max forms that could plow through entire teams, and just the concept as a whole wasn't balanced for competitive Pokemon. This one feels fine. That's that's like my thoughts on it. I think this is fine. It's not the end of the world, and it's going to be perfectly fine if we do have to play with it, as long as it's tied to an item, because let's be real. If it's not tied to an item, and you can just like get a stab boost on any one of your attacks at any point in time, that's going to be really bad. But if it isn't, we're good. So yeah, I'm, I'm like cautiously optimistic for this, uh, but I would like to know what your guys' thoughts are in the comment section down below. Obviously, I'm going off of basically like one leaker who has been fairly consistent and reliable this leak cycle. So take it with a grain of salt. For all we know, it isn't confirmed. But also, for all we know, the trailer came out and I'm having to edit this video to make it look like I knew. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like as always, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.